Hi, I'm Barbie Flanagan. Welcome back and thank you for joining me again. If you're new here, please like and subscribe. Also hit that notification bell. Today we're going to talk about Pam Greer in honor of Black History Month. I love 70s movies. I love the thrillers and I like the action films. Well, black cinema was changing in the 70s. You weren't seeing those domestic roles anymore. You started seeing power, action, characters on screen. And Pam Greer was one of them. 1971, Melvin Van Peebles wrote, produced, directed, financed, and acted in the movie Sweet Sweetback's Badass Song. The film was a major hit. In 2003, his son, actor Mario Van Peebles, made a biographical movie about the hardships his father overcame while making the original film. That movie is called Badass. If you get a chance, check them both out. They're really good. This new genre of cinema is called black exploitation, and it was popular in the 1970s. The NAACP and other organizations had a problem with the films because they perpetuated negative black stereotypes. Unfortunately, people like me freaking love these movies. One of the most popular characters was Shaft, played by Richard Roundtree. He became one of the first black male action heroes. And there's also Superfly. Ron O'Neill stars as young blood priest, a cocaine dealer trying to get out of the business. The soundtrack is done by Curtis Mayfield. There's so much action in these films. The music, the clothing, the language takes you back in time to the 1970s. I'll sit down and watch these black exploitation movies all day long. Today we're gonna to focus on Ms. Pamela Suzette Greer, who is often called the first female action star. Greer was born on May 26, 1949 in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Greer's mother, Gwendolyn, was a nurse and her father, Clarence, was a mechanic in the Air Force. She had three siblings. The family traveled wherever their father was stationed. Finally, they settled in Denver, Colorado. Greer felt right at home. She loved nature and also developed a taste for adventure. When Greer was seven, a group of neighborhood boys assaulted her. She was assaulted again when she was 18. Her date took advantage of her. These incidents had a lasting impact on Greer, but she moved forward. She is a confident and ambitious woman. She stands five foot eight inches tall and had a killer figure. Her ethnicity is African American, Filipino, Puerto Rican, and Native American. Greer's stellar looks helped her win beauty pageants. She used the award money to pay for college. In 1967, Greer moved to Los Angeles, where she was discovered by film director Jack Hill. In 1971, he cast her in his film, The Big Dollhouse. Greer did a fabulous job, and The Big Birdcage followed in 1972. Greer signed a six-picture movie deal with American International Pictures. Greer was hot, and the starring roles kept coming. Just a warning, these films depicted gratuitous sex and nudity. I would call them campy or B films. Filmmakers shot a lot of women in tropical prison films at this time. They chose the Philippines as a setting because it was cheap. They also made these movies very quickly. Quentin Tarantino is a big fan of Greer and Hill. He helped get the classic cult films on streaming apps. We'll come back to Quentin a little later. In 1973, Greer was cast in Coffee. She played a female vigilante who goes after the bad guy. Next came Foxy Brown. The lead character seeks revenge when her boyfriend is killed. By this time, Pam Greer was a mega star. She went on to make more movies such as Black Mama, White Mama, The Arena, Scream Blackula, Scream, Sheba Baby, Bucktown, Friday Foster, and the list goes on and on. As the 80s approached, black exploitation declined in popularity. Greer managed to keep working. Shit, I've been partying all the time. <laughs> appearing in Fort Apache, the Bronx, and oh, Something Wicked This Way home. Comes. She had roles in a wide variety of shows such as Miami Vice, Night Court, and Crime Story. As interesting as Greer's professional life is, her personal life reads like a steamy book. Basketball legend Kareem Abdul-Jabbar asked her to marry him but required that she convert to Islam. 
she declined and he married someone else that day, although he says they split due to distance. Greer had a love affair with comedian Freddie Prince. She broke up with him due to his depression and addiction issues. She remained in contact with him until his suicide. Greer began dating the great Richard Pryor while they were filming Grease Lightning. She tried to help him with his drug addiction, but they eventually parted ways. Greer also dated Soul Train host Don Cornelius and Wilt Chamberlain. She was engaged to Kevin Evans, a record executive, but they broke up. In 1988, Greer faced the biggest challenge of her life. She was diagnosed with stage four cervical cancer. Greer retreated to a ranch in Colorado where she beat the disease. Greer went back to work. In the 1990s, she was in the 1993 remake of Posse, Escape from L.A., Original Gangstas, and more. In 1997, she landed her biggest role yet, Quentin Tarantino's Jackie Brown. This is one of my favorite movies ever. It includes hints of Jack Hill's 1970s films, Foxy Brown and Coffee. The movie has a star-studded cast, Robert De Niro, Michael Keaton, Sandra Jackson, and more. The film is perfection. Greer was nominated for a Golden Globe, and her career was back on fire. Greer landed prominent roles in the movies In Too Deep, and another one of my favorites, John Carpenter's The Ghost of Mars. From 2004 until 2009, Greer portrayed Kit Porter in the show L Word on Showtime. She was fantastic in that role. Me and my friends were so obsessed with the storylines in that series. Greer has been working for five decades. In 2018, she released her autobiography, Foxy, My Life in Three Acts. Pam Greer never married, nor did she have children. She loves her ranch in Colorado. She's an outdoorsy type of gal. She's 73 and she is still acting. And it's important to note that Pam Greer was really one of the first female action uh, actors. And she kicked down doors, which allowed so many other people just to walk on through. I will see you next week. Thank you so much for joining me.